All right, we just finished coming down part way from Gower Canyon. Still have this way to go. And we just came down from that uh, gulch up there where you can see the people coming down up and back of me there. So Ed Getley signing off. Bye-bye. Seventh. And this is, is it? Oh, no, the eighth. And it's right here at the natural bridge. It hasn't fallen on us yet. So Keep it's talking. pretty good. So I'm saying <laughs> hi to all my fans out there. I'm <laughs> signing off. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thanks a lot out of me there. Thank you. I have to tell you, Rosie was a real sickly person. Uh, I can see that. <laughs> you can take that two ways. But Rosie has a testosterone problem, and we're going to see if we can get her some estrogen to take care of that testosterone problem. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, Aaron here, um, he, w he had seen this, what he thought was that white gold this guy had told him about. So they, they came over here, and he went out there and got the stuff. But he had to wait for it to get dark at night so that he could test it to see if it burned green. Because you can't see it very good in the daytime. So after he tested it, you know, they, they became wealthy right away. They contacted me, and I got hold of Coleman. And... Coleman gave me some more money and I went and bought <laughs> the rights to this place. And actually, the interesting thing is, is he didn't even have a claim on it. But um, we paid him $20,000 just for the knowledge on where this was located. Because it turns out there was a lot of bor borax here. And then um, Aaron was really pretty smart and shrewd, and he ended up going over here and filing on all the water. So we had to pay him an extra five thousand dollars for the water. And then he he also found some more borax up at a higher elevation in Amargosa, and we paid him five thousand dollars for that mine up there too. So you know, he became really wealthy, and he ended up buying basically all of Pahrump, that whole valley. He had a big ranch there. And because there was so much lush vegetation there, you guys know what it's like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. These are the actual adobe walls that were here originally, so they haven't done much to them. And then right down there is the main office, and that was the company store. And we had a real hard time getting people to come here and work. <laughs> I wonder yeah, why. Really? Yeah. 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 You know, we, we offered them a ride here, but if the... The Teamster, you know, if it was too, too steep, then the Teamster would make him walk. But uh, in the first year, we paid him $1.25 a day. And if they came back the next year, we gave him a, a raise and paid him $1.30 a day. And, and Coleman was really shrewd, and he figured out that we could charge him room and board. So we charged him $4 a week to stay in these tents out there. And the tents were right at the point way out there. And then we charged them four dollars a day for food, so <laughs> they, they weren't making much money by the end of the week. Yeah. <laughs>
And we knew it was a long ways from the nearest railroad, 186 miles. So, you know, that was the big, uh, the biggest part of making this operation work is getting it to market, getting it to the nearest railroad. And before we ever hauled anything out of here, we planted 40 acres of alfalfa right over here at Furnace Creek Ranch. So that's originally what it was. It was just a farm where they raised alfalfa and, and food for them. Wow. There's more trees out in that direction. Wow. So the Chinese would go out there with these little one mule carts, scrape it up off the the bottom there. Oh, I have some examples of it right here. So here here's some examples you can Yeah, they have lots of steel on that. Yeah. I think we could all pull this.